Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 and the final part of this experiment where we're going to see what happens if you give a non-league team the perfect facilities and set up to be able to become a global superpower. Now so far we've seen them rise up the league system into the Premier League. They've stayed in there the entire time, managed to get Champions League football quite a few seasons in a row now. They've had Mourinho as manager, they've now got Simeone as a manager. They are getting close to winning the Premier League and also getting close um, to, you can see they're finishing second, their highest point. Also getting close to Champions League success with a couple of semi-finals in the bag, including last season when they went out to PSG at the semi-final stage. Um, really unfortunate that they lost 3-1 at home in the second leg to get knocked out, which is very, very unfortunate. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go 10 years ahead in the future. We're not going to do it a year at a time. I'm just going to jump to the end. We'll have a look through each season and what they managed to achieve. Um... And then ultimately, we'll see if they manage to win the Premier League and Champions League, which are the two trophies we're desperately hoping they get, because very few of these experiments actually lead to that kind of success. Uh, so do drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed this series. There will be a new one out in just a couple of days' time, um, and also make sure to subscribe for that. Uh, you can also drop a like on the video and follow me on Twitter using the links in the description to enter a free prize giveaway. Um, so let's go forward now, 10 years, and see how they've got on. Well, we are 10 years into the future. Now, the way we're going to start with this is by looking at the Premier League table over these 10 years to see if they did manage to win the Premier League because it's impossible to tell just by looking at the schedule screen whether they won the league or not. So if we start here, we can then go to the schedule screen to see how they got on, um, mainly in the Champions League, which I think will be the hardest thing for them to win. But hopefully they've got a Premier League title. We were actually 11 years ahead into the future now, so lots to look forward to. When we left off last time, this is where they finished fourth place, a little bit off the top. The following season, though, they actually became the champions of England. Three points clear of Arsenal there, winning the title presumably on the final day. Six defeats as well on the way, but they won way more games than anybody else and managed to take their first Premier League title. So that is one of the objectives checked off already. Um, the following season, Chelsea came back and took the title, Harrogate finishing third. They then won it the following season as well. So two years uh, or two titles in three years, and they finished 11 points clear of Spurs. Could be the beginning of dominance, and they did win it the following season as well. Six points clear of Arsenal, three titles in four years now. Arsenal managed to win it the next season before Harrogate came back again. So they are now a proper team in the Premier League competing for that title. Just missing out the following season there. Finished third the year after that, third after that, and third in the most recent season. So it's been a few years since they managed to win the Premier League title now, but they do have four titles under their belt, which is pretty um, good stuff. So if we have a look at their senior squad schedule and drop back to the very first season, the 34-35 season, and you can see that their Champions League campaign got off to a good start. Wins over Inter, uh, Lyon, Besiktas, Besiktas again, Inter and Lyon. So they had a perfect run there. Knocked out the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup by West Ham, but through in the FA Cup and the fourth round and the fifth round. Drew with Porto away in the first knockout round of the Champions League. And they won in the second one 2-0 to go through to the quarterfinals. Through to the semi-finals of the FA Cup as well, the 4-1 win over Leeds. Uh, beat Inter 2-0 in at the Champions League for the third time that season. They did it with 10 men as well. And in the return leg, lost 1-0 at home, but was still through to the semi-finals. Now remember, this is the season when they won their first Premier League title. So if they win the Champions League as well, what a season that would be. Um, I lost my place. If we go back down, um, then in the semi-finals, they got through against Real Madrid. They also beat Chelsea in the FA Cup final uh, semi-final, so a measure of revenge there. They could be on for the treble. They've got two finals now in the season when they won the Premier League, and they managed to do it with an 81st-minute winner against Real Madrid away from home, against 10 men, but still a really good way to make the final. And then in the FA Cup final, they lost 2-0 to Burnley of all clubs. Why would they do that? But in the Champions League final, they lost to PSG. So they have still not done it. They've got a step further than the year before, but they have not managed to win the Champions League even now. Um, so as Premier League champions, their season's got off to a brilliant start, including beating Real Madrid 2-0 in the group stage and 1-0 in the second match as well. Through in the Carabao Cup quarterfinal, FA Cup, 
um, and managed to win in the Carabao Cup semi-final. So they've got one final on their books out of the FA Cup. Lost 3-2 away to Barcelona, but in the return leg, they did win 3-2, but I think they lost on penalties, which is quite unfortunate. Um, they did, however, win the Carabao Cup, so a bit of silverware for them there, um, and the Champions League already over, so not a lot else to look at there. Disappointing season, really, despite the Carabao Cup win. Through in the Champions League yet again, knocked out the FA Cup, though, Drew with Atletico Madrid in the first leg and then went out in the second leg on penalties. So more disappointment in the Champions League. I'm hoping they do actually win this, having made the final already. A very good start to this season where they won the title. Through in the Carabao Cup quarterfinal, drew in the first leg, lost in the second leg. So out of the Carabao Cup. Um, won 4-0 against Sporting in the first leg away from home, 3-0 in the second. So definitely through there. Lost 3-2 to Arsenal here in the quarterfinals first leg but won 3-0 in the return leg um, lost 2-1 away to PSG and 3-2 PSG are constantly knocking Harrogate out of the Champions League not something I thought I'd say but it is a situation we're facing now they are through in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup um, but managed to get knocked out by Man City still in the FA Cup via a replay in the knockout stages 3-1 against Inter away it was followed up with a 3-2 win in the FA Cup and then a 4-0 win at home comfortably through their 7-1. In the semis, they drew with Chelsea at home. Would be nice to see them win away. And they did 2-1 to knock Chelsea out of the Champions League. Now in the semi-final of the FA Cup, they were beaten. And they were against PSG again in the Champions League. Lost 2-1 away and at home drew 2-2. Yet again knocked out by PSG. Now the following season... We're going to go through this a little bit more quickly now. Um, beat Juventus 3-0 in the Champions League first leg and 1-0 in the second leg. Comfortably through there to the semis, uh, to the quarters, where they drew 0-0 with Inter at home, which is surprising, but beat them 4-2. They are Harrogate's whipping boys, Inter. So they're into the semi-finals yet again. Beat Bournemouth, so they could be on to win the FA Cup, which I still don't think they've done. But PSG again in the semi-finals. Why does this keep happening? Lost 2-1 at home in the return match. Drew 1-1, out again, but did finally win an FA Cup. Um, beating Man City there. So that's another piece of silverware in the trophy cabinet. So it's just the Champions League we care about now, really. Um, and they got through in the Carabao Cup to the final, playing Forest Green in the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup. What is that about? Um, drew with Real Madrid away, lost 3-0 in the Carabao Cup final, and in the return leg, they did beat Real Madrid to go through to the quarterfinals again. 2-0 um, against Bayern at home, lost 1-0 away, but still in the semis where I'm sure they played PSG. It was Chelsea, and they beat them 3-0 in the first leg, and 3-1 in the second one, a 6-1 aggregate win over Chelsea. Now the final... They won the FA Cup final, so they've done the double. I think they might have won the league title that season as well. But in the Champions League final, they did it. They finally beat PSG to win the Champions League. Can you believe it? They have finally won Europe's elite club competition, um, taking the FA Cup with it and probably the Premier League too. Uh, so a very, very good season there. They finally managed to do it. We're just going to look at the following seasons here. They lost... Uh, in the semi-final to PSG, going back to normal there, and lost in the final of the FA Cup. Um, the following season, they lost to Barcelona in the final. So one win and two defeats in the Champions League final. The following year, won the FA Cup again, and in the season just gone, they won the Champions League again. So they've got two Champions League titles now. If we look at the competition screen, you can see them there. Two wins, two defeats. That is not bad for a former non-league team Four Premier League titles, um, three Europa Leagues, two European Super Cups, four FA Cups now, um, and one Carabao Cup in there as well. Community Shield in there. They've only won one of those, which is quite surprising. But I think they've won just about everything in English football now, except for the Club World Cup Championship, which they could win next season. Um, so that, I would say, is a very, very successful um experiment that went absolutely brilliantly and they've managed to become the best team in Europe and literally on the season that we're leaving here they won the Champions League again um, 
Now, this was the 40 season. So the season when they first won the Champions League and the FA Cup, they actually finished fourth. Um, so no treble, unfortunately. But if we have a look at their senior squad and the players that they've got in here, sort them by value. They've got a lot of very, very good players. They've got Arias, who is a um, sweeper. Is he a sweeper keeper? I don't know. He's just... Is that, he can't be a goalkeeper, surely. He's a sweeper, isn't he? That's not... It is a sweeper. It's a defensive sweeper. It's not a goalkeeper. It's not a sweeper keeper. Um, but he's worth £85 million here, Arias. Join them for £132 million from Chelsea. They've got Souza, um, £81 million right winger. He joined them from PSG for £96 million and has got some excellent stats under his belt. Uh, Sanchez, £77 million. Uh, he is from Man City. So you can see they are a financial superpower at this point. Um, then there's Veloso, who does play as a striker. Uh, he costs £61 million from Benfica and chipping in with a few goals. And then Jimmy Gelly could well be a graduate here. He's not. He's from United, cost £101 million, but he's banging in goals. Uh, Larry Bian, they've got a whole bunch of French players in their team, which they are picking up from the likes of PSG. This one signed from Real Madrid. Um, and Bertrand at £61 million, a centre-back, joined for £56 million. So they're signing quite a lot of players. If we have a look at their transfer history, we can quickly run back. You see £202 million spent, 263 uh, in their average in nearly £200 million. They must have failed financial fair play the year before that. But they are really pumping out the cash there's no doubt about that huge quantities of cash being spent but it has led to them becoming european champions and if we look at the club detail screen here you can see club attendance over 150,000. they've got maximum reputation decent bank balance but no sugar daddy anymore which is quite interesting facilities are still perfect uh, so they are holding up pretty well across all of those fronts now if we have a look at the players that have been trained at harrogate then you can see here, here are all the players that have been trained at Harrogate at one point or another. So the biggest one plays for Man City worth £59 million and he left Harrogate for £40 million. Never really got great stats at any point in his career with Harrogate but has somehow become a £60 million defensive midfielder. There's Robbie Thorpe who plays as a uh, attacker midfielder, was at Harrogate for a long time, joined Southampton on a free which is... A silly transfer to give away, really, when he's worth that much. Cameron Westwood, currently at Newcastle, joined for £12.5 million. Again, not the best stats in the world. There's Peter Clayton, uh, worth £32 million. Uh, joined Birmingham on a free and then went to Palace. But none of these players are really getting anything near top quality stats. You've got Tom Bowman, um, started at Harrogate. So these excellent facilities are delivering £20 million plus players, but not... As many as you would imagine, there's a lot of players here that were trained at Harrogate. So they are bringing in a lot of decent quality players. It must have raised them an awful lot of cash um, or saved them a lot of cash by bringing in such good players. You've got Glenn Winter here um, who plays for United. I think if we sort them by average rating, then you can see Logone, who is 33 and plays for Barcelona now as a centre-back. Joined from Harrogate for £104 million and he has got excellent career stats across the board. Definitely would have been one of the best players in the world at the time. Um, there's also Russ Dodd who plays in the Championship, so not too interested in him. But quite a few players finishing with 7 point ratings there, um, which is quite impressive. The last thing I want to have a quick look at is the England national team because obviously... They have had Harrogate's youth players coming through for about 30 years now. And if we look at their competition screen, um, you can see they did win the European Football Championship in 2028 and runner-up in 2032. Won the International League as well, but no new World Cup. So the years of misery are continuing for England fans and Reese Oxford is currently the manager. So I think that is just about it for this experiment do drop a like on the video if you enjoyed this one let me know if you've got any suggestions for new experiments down in the comments and subscribe for the next experiment when it comes out in a couple of days time remember to follow me on twitter as well using the link in the description and then you can enter the prize giveaway for a football shirt from barcelona or england but until next time see ya